Oh. There. There I am. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Just a fucking head. Oh my god. <laughs> if I ever get the fucking money together to actually commission someone to do this, I would love to commission someone to 3D animate a little fucking intro where it's just the fucking intro to Mario 64, but it's my fucking head. <laughs> I'm just like, hello! But I'm, I'm, maybe I'll have like a different uh, greeting for like each iteration that it goes through. He's like, it's like, hello! And the first one, they'll have me looking around for a little bit, and then it'll like shrink back in. <laughs> and then it'll pop up again and be like, bonjour! And then, like, one of the last ones is just, it's just, it's just gonna be like, Sup? <laughs> anyway. We're listening to Snail's House right now. That chill space age sound that first started, if anyone happened to be there for that, was uh, Anders Anger Jensen. A um, independent artist that I found through um, LGR, Lazy Game Reviews, because he had sent some of his uh, albums to him. And it's real fucking cool of him. Ah, there we go. I accidentally turned the touchpad off. You can't see that right now. There we go, that's better. And then now we are going to... Transition! To the Wind Waker! Why the fuck? Oh, that's wrong. That's right. That's why. It's right here. I'm gonna put that down there. And then hide it. Hide away, hide away! Alright, so... We're gonna keep this up here. It's Machine Girl. Now, let us see what was cut from The Legend of Zelda, Wind Waker. The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, depicts the land of Hyrule in the aftermath of a glo of global warming. That's very funny. Let me turn that down just a hair. Here we go. A little better. Okay, what sub pages do we got? We got prototype, we got pre release, we got alternate scene setups, I'm not sure what that is. Hidden level features, hello. Unused link animations, unused NPC animations, which this just looks weird right here. Unused cutscenes, fuck yeah. Unused rooms, hell yeah. Items, models. Man, what the fuck is that? Things cut from Wind Waker time. Hell yeah, loader. Welcome. Let's do prototype. Gotta start where it all began. Please. Thank you. Oh man, I swear that song just messed up the fucking audio channel. There we go. Okay. Legend of Zelda of the Wind Waker. This prototype of the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker was discovered. Ahoy. Yes, hello. I've been playing um, Metroid Prime, by the way. I don't know if you're into Metroid, but I've been playing it for the past three video game streams, and it's been great. Surprisingly uh, productive in my playthroughs, even though I haven't played the game in like a decade, and the first time I did play it, I had to use a walkthrough. <laughs> Either way. Uh, discovered on a Japanese GameCube demo disc titled Monthly Nintendo Store Demo. Uh, 1 December 2002, which was displayed in Japanese stores in early December of 2002 to give customers a taste of the game. I'm not into Metroid, but hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. It's like, 
I get the same like I get playing through Metroid Prime and I've I've said this like a thousand times and it never stops being true. Um, I get the same feeling playing through Prime after a decade as like if you've been away from from a place that you used to love going to as a child and you suddenly go back like over a decade later, you don't remember anything about it until you step foot inside and you're like, "Oh yeah, this was here." And then as you like walk continue walking through, you're like, "Oh yeah, that was there." And if that was there, then this was over here. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that feeling, man. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's a great feeling. I, like, I was so worried. The, the reason why I hadn't come back to Prime is because I was so worried that I wouldn't be able to make any progress, because I still haven't beaten Metroid Prime 2 or 3. Like, I'm still stuck on that, and I do plan to on restarting it and seeing if, how far I can get without a walkthrough, and I might, you know, if anyone, in, if anyone in chat has some advice for where to go whenever I play Prime 2. It would be much appreciated, but, um, yeah. There we go. Let's see. Built, built November 18th to 19th, 2002. Just over a week before the Japanese finals, November 27th build date. Uh, there's quite a few differences in here. Okay, let's see what we got. Object differences. Oh, whoa. That looks weird as hell, dude. Are you kidding me? Here, let's half this. Boop, up, uh, boop, up, a doo. Boop, a doo. Okay, here we go. Oh my god. What is that man's face? Wow. Who knew he had a face behind that mask? That's crazy. I don't know if y'all can see the, the regular version behind me. Jahala, the Earth Temple boss, is unmasked. This figure at the Nintendo Gallery reveals Jahala with all of his facial beauty. I mean, beauty is one way to put it. Yeah, there's the final. Ooh, we got And So I Watch You From Afar playing right now. Wind Waker was like... When we were like 20 something. <laughs> Correct. It came out in 2003. So it is over. It is. It's, it's 21 years old. It can drink now. Wind Waker can drink now, y'all. But, like, look at this. <laughs> look at this man's face. He got them DSLs going on. I'm not going to lie. He do have them DSLs going on. Like he got that special lipstick. Like he's at, like he knows what he's about to do. <laughs> oh, we got a fucking we got that the plant boss over there. That's really cool looking. And there's something in the background that I've not seen. Granted, I have never actually been to the guy who actually sculpts the um, which call it the um, the little statues because I never bothered with it because it just seemed like a hassle. But yeah, real goofy like. God, that's so silly. He's got he's got like kind of a pig nose too going on. Very pig nose esque. Say unused objects. Power of the gods pillars. Wow. The fuck were these? Also, the the unmasked face of that guy is absolutely the thumbnail, unless I find something goofier. Which, knowing this game, I might. Found inside the archive, rel objects H -E B D L. In the demo, are six pillars with currently unknown functionality. These are not present in the final game. Below is the object normally found in the archive. So it's this thing. So it's an early version of this thing right here. I mean, I kind of get it. I like the base pedestal, but like the objects are just so fucking goofy.
<laughs> Burpee. Excuse me. That needs to shrink. There we go. That should still be around the same size. Map differences. Oh, that's an interesting difference. And thankfully, my head's not in the way uh, of the of the difference. In the final, this coffin right here is just standing up just fine. And then in the demo, for some reason, it's just laying... No, no, two of them are laying flat. Oh, kind of like an obstacle sort of thing, like to add some extra challenge, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Here, let me zoom in. It's right there in the back. Two coffins. Weird thing to change, but I mean, eh. I wouldn't mind trying to run that gauntlet of those coffins while trying to... Oh, itchy foot. While trying to um, get around it and whatnot. Oh, and more Anders Inger Jensen. Okay. Alright, what's the difference here? Oh! They changed the barrels to uh, pots in the final. What a weirdly specific difference. I guess, well... I guess the barrels are more for the ocean-y kind of thing, where you're like, oh, you're shipping barrels of goods to and from different islands. And then the pots are like ancient are like ancient pottery in this ancient temple. So I guess the, the aesthetics would have clashed. That makes sense. What do we got? I'm... The Distant Horseshoe Island. The distant island, the distant horseshoe island model, causes a crash on four islands, including outset island. Use this code to delete the model. What? I don't really see a difference except for like the presence of keys right there between where the bridge was. But I feel like they show up later in the game. I could be wrong though. I don't know. That's really weird. Uh, Forsake and Fortress. Oh. There used to be a shot eye where the door to uh, get to Ganon was. But instead they replaced it with the, uh, the skull hammer button. Which tells me that they may have uh, had you get the hammer before the bow originally. Which, that would have been interesting to see. Makes me wonder, like, how else they, like, how it would have changed the pace of the game. Again, this is Anders Inger Jensen who's playing. Ganon's Tower. Uh, the barrier surrounding the final boss fight at Ganon's Tower can sometimes fail to load. When it does not load, it is possible to push both Ganon and Zelda off the edge, and they will continue to fight in the void. <laughs> what the fuck? That's weird. Oh, wow, there used to be some Octo Rocks in the Tower of the Gods? That would have actually made it more interesting. It would have been, you know, more of a challenge, but like, oh, gotta kill these guys. It also would have let them use Octorox more frequently. Like, bro, are you kidding me? They use Octorox like maybe once or twice. The only place that I'm aware of is, uh, is the, uh, the Lost Woods. The island with the Koroks on it. I forget what the fuck it's called. But yeah, that's crazy. There are two pots next to the boss. Oh, wait, hold on, this one. There is an Octorok present in the first floor of the Tower of the Gods, which is not present in the final game. Correct. There are two pots next to the boss door in the room before Godan instead of four. Oh. They just added an extra pot for more resources. That's weird. Yeah, right? Well, you can see two of them right here, and then the other two right here, but my fucking head's in the way. 
and I don't want to and I don't want to hmm I don't want to resize myself but I might we'll see point is there's four pots oh there it is right above my head right there above me head what is this oh more Andrew's anger Jensen fuck yeah dude Savage Labyrinth. That's the name of it. I always forget that it's called that. Uh, all pose in the Savage Labyrinth are blue, whereas in the final game they have several different colors. I personally like the blue, but and the purple, but that's just me. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like that may that would like if they had kept them all blue, it would have made them feel like distinct to that area, perhaps. I don't know, maybe they just wanted them to feel like regular pose as opposed to like special pose that could only be found in uh, the Savage Labyrinth. Uh, the electric barriers on floor 48 are glitched, resulting in odd visuals and, st and strange collision. Oh, that is weird. Look at that, that's weird. <laughs> Isn't that weird? How many times can I say weird before it loses all meaning weird? Yeah, the positioning of that, I wonder how that happened. I mean, it was the demo, so they were still working on it. So I'd imagine there were still some kinks to work out, and that was one of them. Oh, man. There's a fire-breathing moblin statue above the hole in floor 50. Only dark floors have torches next to the holes in the next floor, unlike in the final... What? Oh, they're basically saying that, like... This uh, this fire breathing moblin statue that like I they that, those things hardly ever get used in Wind Waker but um in the demo one of these was like right above the hole to the next level and then they realized that was stupid and so they're like all right fine and so they moved it over <laughs> but that also made it like less likely that you're gonna get hit by it granted I think I did get hit by them while I was trying to avoid the dark nuts could be wrong though uh, there are six pots containing a total of 600 rupees on the last floor instead of no pots in the front oh wow man that would have been cool to get some extra rupees from those pots I wonder where they don't know why they took them away yeah you can see up here in the corner above me head not a pot in sight Slowly, there it is. Not a pot in sight. Bereft of pot. <laughs> Ooh, what the fuck? Chart differences. C chart. The demo is just like a really blobby ring, I guess. Ringu. And then the final is just the the map icon for Tower of the Gods. The image used to used to represent the Tower of the Gods is this blob. Yeah, very interesting. Sure is, editor. Sure is. Special charts. What is the? Di oh, I think I see it. I see. T I see one difference so far. Here, hold on. Let me. Boop. And then I'll boop. Try and get them about the same size. Ugh. Damn it. Either way, you should be able to tell the difference despite the slight jankiness. So far, I can only see one difference, and it's up here in the top left-hand corner. It's so these things, the three skulls, that's from the demo, and then in the final, it was removed for more generic Helian text. So far, that's the only thing that I can notice. Hold on, let me just... Yeah, it's the only thing I can see. 
is the the top left corner. Ooh, Suf Jan Stevens. Let us see what the difference is, 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 is we can spot. Huh. Two hearts over here. One, two, three. Oh! I found a difference right here. Uh, the second to last square right here didn't have an extra heart piece, but they added one in the final game. Uh, let's see what else. This row's pretty much the same. They added two hearts here in the final, right here. They added a, a third one right next to it in the final. And then, boop, right here in the... Yeah, these are, these are, the, these are pretty much the same. Um, these next, the next row's the same as well. Um, another same. These are also the same, yeah. So there's, they just added more heart pieces. Yeah, the demo chart is missing the heart piece for Seven Star Isle Square and the second one for Rock Spire Isle Square. Likely because what? Why did you? What? <laughs> Why the fuck did you just like leave it? Leave it with a fucking ellipses at the end. Also, I need to crack this uh, Celsius. I forgot I had it. It's sparkling oasis vibes. Whatever the fuck that means. Hopefully, it's not Wonderwall flavor. <laughs> Ooh, that's very good. Mm. Oh yeah, good shit right there. Okay, so Island Heart Chart. That's not right. This is the um, the C chart 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 chart. <laughs> okay, so they add no, they took away. Fuck, god damn it! I hate that. They, I hate when they do that. They added one chart. No, they took away. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. They took away one chart in the second last row, or the, the second to last square in the first row. Second to last column, first row. There it is. And then they kept these. They took away one from this, and then they took away this one as well. What the fuck, dude? That's weird. That they took away heart pieces. You'd think they'd have kept them. Uh, I also um regarding the zoom because I don't want to I don't want to like zoom it in so far that like you can't see both images at the same time because it, it seems like this would be a little I don't know because I also want to stay on the screen but I also don't want it to be too far out and I have to like juggle between the two things. Let's see. Zoom out, and then... There we go. Well, let's see. A demo chart includes treasure charts in the squares for Seven Star Isles and Tingle Island, plus a second one in Rock Spire Isle Square. Let's see. Secret cave chart? There a secret, there's a secret cave chart? I've never heard of this thing. What the hell is that? Secret cave? Secret cave chart. See, now I've got to look this up. What the fuck is a secret cave chart? Not secret cave chart. Secret cave chart. I needed to add that to my little walkie through thing because I had never seen that before. What the fuck? Um, secret cave chart. Zelda wiki. Bam, baby. What do we got? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> My skip ad. Secret cave chart. Oh my it shows the location of hidden holes around the Great Sea. It can be found at the uh, at Overlook Island using treasure chart number thirteen. What? Wow. Now what the fuck are hidden holes? 
You can do it. Go forth. And do. There we go. Oh, it's just the fucking... It's the grottos. Okay, got it. It's just the grottos. I thought that's what they were called. It's fucking... Nope, they're just called hidden holes. <laughs> Uh, Ocarina of Time. Stone of Agony. The controller will begin to rumble. Almost all hidden holdings contain chests, pieces of heart, gossip stone, cows. There's no... Oh, they also appear in Wind Waker, too. What the fuck? I don't think I've ever gotten these before. Country. That's very funny. Hold on, I have to show this on the screen. They have, a, they have a whole section for country. <laughs> the country of Hyrule, Termina, and the Great Sea. That's so... F There's something really silly about that level of detail, but I mean, hey. More power to them if they're going to go for that. If they're going to go to that to those lengths. The dedication. For sure. Oh, this is the devil in the universe. Uh, featuring Matter Suspiria something. Matter Suspiria Vision. Matter Sus yep, Matter Suspiria Vision. Alright, cool. The demo chart includes secret caves for Fairy Islands, North and West, Northwest, South, and Thorned, and Southern. And Southern Triangle Isle, plus a second cave for Ice Ring Isle. How are you supposed to find these, though? I don't think I ever found these. I don't remember any... I don't remember finding it. Any fucking secret caves. That's so odd. This is blowing my fucking mind apart right now. How the fuck did I never knew about these secret caves? I've been playing this game for over a decade. I started playing it in high school. I never fucking knew about this. This is insane. This one I knew about. I didn't really care for it personally. I did, they're just tiny little things. Yeah, the ring, the light rings, six of them versus five in the final, are all in different spots in the demos trip. Yeah, they are. Wow, they are all in different spots. Can't see it because of my fat head, but they are all different because there's two, four, and six. And then in, in the demo, it's. Oh, God damn, it. damn you, me. <laughs> it's two, four, and five. So there's even less in the final version, which is crazy. Making sure my audio didn't fuck up. And then it's just the song. Oh, we got more of these. Let's see. That's the same. That's the same. One, three, one, 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 three, one, one, one. One, two, or one, one, one. One, one, and two. A small detail, I know, but it's still interesting to see how the world map may have been different uh, based on the earlier part of the, in the game. Because in the final version, uh, there's two right here, and in, in the original version, there would have been one. Makes me wonder what reward, if anything, you would have gotten from these. I almost never bother with them anyway. Because most of the rewards that they give you are just like 20 rupees or some shit. Let's see. One, three, one. Yeah. Whoops. There it is. Two, one, one. Okay. Itchy. Ah, there's the good stuff. The submarine chart. Okay, so two, four, and six. Yeah, two, four, six, and then the final one they had. Make sure my hair is out of, uh, fully out of the way, or as much as it can be. There is one down here by my chin. <laughs> so two, four, six, and seven. They added an extra one. Which extra one did they add? Boom, boom. Uh, maybe they didn't add an extra one. I don't fucking two, four. Six, yeah. Two, four, six. Oh, they added the extra one right here. Right above my head. Okay, got it. Silly bo billy me. Ooh, the hearts chart. That's a cute one. The rupees chart just looks like a regular treasure chart, except it's got little designs of rupees on it, but I really like the treasure the 
A heart chart icon. How big is it? Hold on. Oh, boo. That sucks. We just gotta fucking zoom in. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks. Too spooky vibes. Not, not, not now. Not right now. Oh, that's better. Fuck yeah. Lovely snail's house. Alright, let's see. Orientation text. Okay, so these look about the same, but they're probably not. Let's see. That's the same. Loops around that way. Two big square, or one big square right here. And then like a little buff arm with a buff shoulder with a skinny arm. And then a little thumb. Square. Around the horn. They look the same to me. Hmm. I'm failing to see it. The only difference I can see so far is like right here, right in this little line of green. In the final version, this little this is like cleaned up a little bit. So if you look at the black outline right here, the the negative space, it kind of looks like a silly dinosaur. There's the thin head, there's the body, there's the feet, and then there's two long arms. And if you notice how fat he gets right here, you notice in the final he's thinned out. That's the only way I'm able to tell what the fucking difference is. <laughs> uh, there's also a slight difference in the negative in the negative space right here, as opposed to here. It's very slight, but it's there. This has more. I guess this has a more defined bridge or something. And then that's just yeah everything. Yeah, they, they just added a little bridge. That looks like a fucking golf course. <laughs> um, they thicken the lines in the final version right, right around here. There was a little line right here jutting out that they cleaned up. Yeah, it's just general general cleanup right here. Uh, no, 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 no. Same thing, similar thing. Thin right here, thicker right here just for cleanup's sake. Looks like a big old green mouth going, Aah! and he's shooting a fucking laser beam. <laughs> Ooh, that looks like a board game. I'd play that. Just from the look alone. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, down down oh, yeah, there's the circle missing right here. I kind of love these segments because it's like it's like a spot the difference test. <laughs> Let's play spot the difference. Oh, I really should have that as like a little segment. Like a little animation, like spot the difference, y'all. Let's see. And sometimes it can be as obvious as that or as subtle as the fucking thick dinosaur versus the thin dinosaur right here. That's so crazy. All right, that's it for the maps anyway. Ganon's Tower Forbidden Woods. Oh. Oh, cool. They had like lasers in this section originally in the f in the f in the Ganon's Tower version of the Forsaken Woods, which definitely would have made it more annoying for sure. Oh, it's arcade player playing Hyrule at Peace from Legend of Zelda. Which one? A link to the past or a link between worlds? A link between worlds, okay. I like Arcade Player, but recently they've been churning out so much shit that I, uh, I say shit, I haven't listened to it. They've been churning out so much stuff that I worry that like, they're either overworking themselves as a team or they're using AI. And I don't want either outcome to be true. I haven't read anything about it. It's pure hunch. 
pure hunch and pure speculation. And I have no clue, but like, they've released like 20 albums this year alone. And the year's not even over yet. It's weird. I don't get it. Oh, I'll pop my wrist. I'm gonna skip Shuff Jan Stevens for now. I'm not sure if uh, if I can play it on here, and I want to make sure that I can. Here's more arcade player doing fucking WWF Warzone like a motherfucker. Love WWF Warzone. Uh, let's see. Mm. Oh, yeah, right. We were looking at the um, Ganon's Tower of Forbidden Woods. Yeah, there, there were initially some laser beams in here. Oh, that's cool. I'm not sure how you would have gotten past those. <laughs> Unless these are, like, below the little carry cart thing. Then, then I could get it, but even then, it's... That would have made them pointless. Maybe there was like a switch you had to hit in order to like turn them off temporarily and then you had to run back and then. Three aisle. C3 aisle. What? Oh, before the demo, yeah. So I don't really see anything different right here. Diamond Step Island Maze. Yeah, they didn't really. <laughs> Darkling Kale. Uh, I believe you got a little bit more work to do, but the work you've done so far, phenomenal. Just keep up, keep, keep at it there, um, bud. Keep at it there, bud. Bud is like non-binary or it's gender neutral, right? I, I don't know. I don't want to assume either way, but either way, they're doing a good job. Not used in the final version. You know, I would make this the thumbnail just for a joke because there's that's clearly like a skin texture over her dress, and it weirdly makes her look naked, which is really funny to me. Yeah, for unknown for unknown reasons, Zelda's dress abruptly becomes skin colored at one point during the final cutscene. <laughs> that's weird. It's very funny. But I also don't want people to, like, glance at it and be like, Naked Zelda! I also don't want YouTube to get the wrong idea, either. That's very funny, though. Ooh, audio differences. Oh. Opening the chest in the ghost ship plays a sound not used in the final game. Uh, the sound it plays seems to be a sped-up version of the, fir of the first of Jaboon's unused audio files. While the only ghost ship chest in the final game plays a sped up version of the second Jaboon's unused audio file. That I remember. Because, um. I remember watching an old episode of Digital Gaming about how there are unused uh, audio files of Jaboon screaming in pain. And it turns out that one of those unused files was sped up and used as the scream that Link hears whenever you get the, tri the, the Triforce chart from the ghost ship. The. That thing? Crazy. Map select, debug stuff that I do not understand. Dialogue test, cool. Alright. Not much, but hey. Oh. Back one more time. There we go. Pre release info! It almost looks like it's banging the keyboard to the beat of the music. Yeah. He's jamming. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Triple X. I remember seeing that movie as a kid. It was weird. 
1999, Triple X, development begins, question mark? There it goes, a little better. I'll, I'll still read it, read it out for y'all. Uh, 2000, uh, August 22nd, a Zelda tech demo is shown at Space World 2000. 2001, August 22nd, the first footage of the Wind, of Wind Waker is unveiled at Space World 2001. 2002, boom, boom, boom. Uh, May 15th, the game's U.S. release date is delayed to February of 20, of 20, of 2003. I was in second grade. The last semester of second grade. And then in May, on May 22nd, er, 22nd, that's my birthday. May 21st, so a day before my birthday, a playable demo is unveiled to the press at E3 2002. Trying to remember how old I would, how old I was at that time. Hold up. Eh. Grab phone. Eh. There we go. Let's see how old I was in 2002, 1994, and 2002 would have been on my birthday, and I was eight years old. So I was seven on May 22nd when they released the demo. The next day, I was eight. <laughs> and I was gonna go into, uh, and, then, and then I was about to go into that. That's that, that, that's actually like the last day of school is usually my birth was was my birthday, or somewhere around there. And every year, uh, they used to sell this twenty four pack of crayon popsicles, if I remember correctly. And I would buy. My mom was nice enough to buy them. She wor she worked as a teacher at the same school that I went to. Which, is, which was the only reason why I got to go there. Um, good and bad, good and bad aspects of that, but that's that's a story for another time. Um, uh, what else was it? Um, oh yeah, so I my mom would buy two boxes of of, of, of a, this twenty four pack of teeny tiny little popsicles that looked like crayons, not teeny tiny, but you know what I mean. They're like they look, they look, they look, they look like big crayons on popsicle sticks, and they were good. Um, and uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we would, everyone would get some, and they'd wish me a happy birthday or some shit like that. I vague, I don't remember much of it. <laughs> and um, I'd pick three friends to like have a sleepover with, and it was the fucking best, bro. It's fucking sweet. <laughs> um, but that the, the 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 popsicle thing only ever happened uh, in elementary school. After middle school, it didn't really work out. Still, it was dope while it lasted. Uh, let's see. October 15th, the official Japanese title is revealed to be Kaze no Takuto. Uh, October 18th, the E3 2002 demo is made available to the public at Nintendo's Cube Club event. Hilarious. November 6th, Nintendo begins a teaser campaign for the game. November 22nd, Japanese box art for the game, as well as its pre-order bonus is revealed. December 2nd, the official English title is revealed to be The Wind Waker. December 4th, the game's U.S. release date is pushed back to March 24th of 2003. December 13th, The Wind Waker is released in Japan. Oh, so technically Wind Waker, at least in Japan, came out the same year as Metroid Prime. That's crazy, dude. Wow. March 24th, Wind Waker is released in uh, in America. May 2nd, uh, the uh, Wind Waker is released in Europe. And May 7th, the Wind Waker is released in Australia. Cool. Mario and Zelda at Spit. What? Vasistas? If you will load, please. Thank you. Oh my god. Man, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Barnes and Noble having a massive sale. I love me some Barnes and Noble. Hope it sticks around for as long as possible, because bookstores are on the way out, sadly. And I really wish they weren't, because physical books are the fucking best. Definitely better for your eyes. Alright, that's a lot. IGN64, that's funny. 
So an old, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to blind y'all. The Ultimate GameCube Preview Guide. Miyamoto says New Mario and Zelda Cube at Space World. Interview with Satoru, Iro Satoru Iwata. Zelda moving right along. For loose and fancy free. We got everything you need for someone with me. Moving right along. Hey, summer, when you gone? And I'm in the rooms and the incest catch you on. Oh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. This is a lot of fucking arcade players, so I'm gonna pop over here and check the the queue. Hey, Pogo. Uh, I want to remove. I need. I've been meaning to remove Goldfish from the playlist because Goldfish is is I, I discovered is not safe. Not as safe as um as I would like it to be anyway. We got more Snail's House and Arcade Player. So we're gonna remove those from the queue. They've been kind of, they've been kind of dominating the queue this evening. Ooh, we got some RuneScape stuff coming up. I'm fine with with a little more Anders Inger Jensen because he hasn't had a chance to shine yet. Remove some more of that Arcade Player. Banther Rider fucking rips. They are a Star Wars themed power, Star Wars themed stoner metal band, which Bears just sounds dogs hilarious. And dogs and bears and possums and dogs. Bears and possums and dogs and dogs and bears and possums and dogs. Hell yeah. Dogs and possums and dogs and dogs. Ech. Get things in the way. Remove cue. Sorry, I'm just kind of editing my music cue as I go. Bears and possums and dogs. There we go. Bears and possums and dogs. Dear me. Dear me. Dear me. Oh, it's such a good swing jam. Not swing, but you know what I mean. It makes you sway back and forth. Anyway. Go away. Come again. Another day. Go away. Come again. Another day. Oh, whoa. That's cool looking. Let's see what the fuck this is. Ah. Whoa. Cool. Stealth stage. Island of Magical Beast. The fuck? Wow. That's cool looking. I love like the, the cloudy like aesthetic that's similar to the um, the menu from Ocarina of Time. I wonder if the owner if they reused that. Bells and possums and dogs. Your sister gave you this through uh, this thoughtful gift while looking through it. You can zoom in with R and zoom out with L. Oh, that's a weird looking early pause screen. Ooh, Death Haven. Some black metal, I think. Oh, screenshots, hello. Concept art, glitterberry.com. Hope you still have it. 
Oh, what the fuck? Why is my... Why did my Wi-Fi... Well, I saw that dip. I saw that dip. I don't know if anyone else saw that dip. But I saw it. That was fucking weird. The hell? Glitterberry's game translation. Oh, that's cool. Staff interviews pre-release Space World 2001. Is it still there? I hope so. Oh, that. Oh, well, that's higher. That's high res right there. That's cool. I remember this. I remember. I remember watching a video of it. That background right there is super fucking neat. Looks like Link's got some lipstick going on. Good for him. Link's original GameCube design based directly on his Ocarina of Time appearance, which later appeared in a modified form in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Oh, yeah. yeah that makes sense. Ganondorf's design, like Link's, later appeared in Melee. He even kept the sword for post-battle yeah, for post-battle poses. Although, in later games, he would later use it for um, Smash Ultimate, I believe. I think. Could be wrong. That's very cool. Ah. All right, let's see. Note the giant statue. Oh, there is a giant statue in the back. I didn't even notice that at first. It kind of blends in. It appears to have a large head that is reminiscent of Ganondorf. I mean, vaguely? Question mark. Wow, these are cool. Yeah, there's like there's the actual footage from IGN. I like the look of the floor. Those tiles are neat. This is from 2000 as well. I was in kindergarten at the time. Weird. Let's see. Alternate interface. Space World 2001. Yeah, I don't like those high-pitched noises. Ooh, Geosaur, cool. D <laughs> Look at him go. Zelda? Oh my god. Oh, oh, I love those. I love the brown sleeves. I wish they'd bring those back for like the regular outfit. Oh, there's the um, the original UI. All right, we're almost at an hour, so get ready for that ad break. <laughs> the Winky. I love the Winky face. That's really cute. He also looks like he's a little bit taller in this. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. He looks a little bit taller. He looks like a baller. <laughs> uh, oh, the Moblins didn't change much. That's cool. Link wishes he was a little bit taller. He wished he was a baller. He wished he had a rabbit and a hat with a bat and a six-form Paula. <laughs> Oh, is that like a broken tree, or is he seeing through it? I can't tell. The turnaround. Yeah, his arms look longer in the demo. Oh, that's cute. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck is that face? Oh my god. That's fucking hilarious. What the hell? 
I love that. I love that. What a silly goober. Here, let me... There. That's gonna be the fuck. That's the fucking thumbnail right there. Hell yeah, dude. Complete with mouth open me. Perfect. We got it. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh! There's the wink again. Did, wait, did they like recreate these? Or what? I'm very confused. Because they already showed him winking. Ooh, that's a cute one. I like that. He's surrounded by fairy, little fairies and stuff. Or lightning bugs, either one. Oh, looking around corners. That's cute. Oh, there's the squad. There's his fucking, uh, what's the term? Uh, DreamWorks eyebrows. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh, I'm up to no good. <laughs> oh, there's some basic combat. Some more moblins coming out of smoke. They keep repeating. Well, there's a different one, but that's too fucking blurry to tell. Him behind a mob land. There's a different little angle, I guess. Bam. But, ah, there's a fucking one little bit of uh, the first instinct that if you po if you like poke them in the ass with your sword, they'll start crying. That's a good bit. I do kind of miss that there's like toadstools in that hollowed out log though. Oh, there it is. It's ad break time. Good evening, VOD watchers. I hope you are enjoying this little romp through the early workings of Wind Waker. Um, I remember seeing some of these in old DJ New Gaming videos. And, um,. I remember thinking that these were this is like so mysterious it's like oh what could it be <laughs> and that was before I even learned about like a website like this hey runescape music gnome ball crazy anyway but yeah um I always thought that, like, looking at cut content, <laughs> that, uh, cut content like that felt like looking through a fucking tomb of an ancient civilization. <laughs> as silly as it sounds, like, you know, obviously it's not as glamorous, I guess, but for me personally, it, it feels that way. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Something about this felt special. It's felt like especially spe a special special. Where it's like, oh. <laughs> I guess my logic at the time was like, oh. Uh, everyone, any, anyone can go, can, can look at a picture of a fucking uh, Egyptian site. But it's real special to look at yeah, cut video game content that was never meant to see the light of day. Oh, man. <laughs> like that kind of silly shit. Obviously, it's like, you know, it's just as special to see it like the fucking site at Gobekli Tepe as it is to find a, a um, like an old flash drive featuring like the beta version of a game or something like that. But yeah. Oh, are we back? Yep, we're back. Right in time. I looked at it right then. All right. Uh, 
Let us continue the search while listening to Ara, which is a black metal band that is very not very well known, I don't think. The Turn Face. There's a shit. Oh my god, look at it. Like, it's. It is this far down, and the fucking thing is, like, so small. But most of these are repeated, so we're just gonna close this out. We got the gist. In progress, the Wind Waker Image Gallery. Is that true? No, it's not. What the... F oh, there it is. What the fuck? Kind of wish they'd put... <laughs> I don't know if y'all can see that. Hold on. <laughs> the big old frowny face. <laughs> oh, that's cute. August 2002 screenshots. Ooh, from GameSpy? Is GameSpy even still a thing? No, it's not, but I guess the... Uh, well... I guess they kept it as, like, an archive. I don't know. Oh, I see now. He's still got the arm... The brown arm thingies. He still has the longer arms as well. At least it seems that way. It seems like they were, like, having the idea of him having the old tunic up until very close to release. And then they fucking changed it for reasons I will never know. Because I fucking love the orange sleeves. Brown? Orange? I can never tell if they're orange or brown. They look like a weird in-between, like on the, on the sliding scale of orange to brown. It looks like a mix, like right in the fucking middle. Kind of like how Salmon both looks like red and pink. Okay. That's it for the pre-release info. Now let's see what else we got. Double the post boxes, double the fun. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? Oops. Well, I can't go sideways, so let's see. By using the map select, it's possible to play on Outset Island uh, with a somewhat unique setup. There is an extra palm tree by Link's house, two mailboxes, a few jars, and several keys flying near the suspension bridge at the top of the island. Two additional palm trees are also located around the out, out, outside of the forest on top of the island. What the fuck does it mean by alternate setups? I don't really get that. Hey, debug room! Fuck yeah, I'd love to see them debug rooms. And I remember from whenever I was looking at, um, I either looked at this page years ago before they added more stuff to it, or, um, saw it on, uh, an episode of Digi New Gaming, but, uh, uh, a lot, of, many, if not all of the, um, well, no, I think many, I think it's just most of them, but not all of them, most of the test rooms have clear, translucent water. Which a lot of people thought was very strange at the time. Uh, and I still think it's super cool. It makes me wonder if they, if they had any ideas to... Um, um, turn, at least, if not portions, like the entire ocean translucent. Or, maybe like, in the shallows would be translucent, and then... Um, as you got deeper, it became more cloudy because you couldn't see. That now that 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 would have been really cool, personally. But I think I don't know if they had the power on the system to do that or not. These days, absolutely they would, but not back in like 2002. Misplaced objects? Hell yeah! Weed whacking in the void. What we got? Ooh. The first room of Dragon Roost Cavern has a wooden barrier misplaced at the lower level. Oh yeah, I see. It's it's like right down. It's like right here. 
Right fucking here. That's hilarious. What the fuck? <laughs> Just a random ass little wooden thing. It's those it's the wooden barriers that are in Dragon Roost Cavern that you just kind of throw shit at and it breaks or you swing your sword at them and it breaks. What the fuck? How did you manage to get out of bounds? The boss room of the Forbidden Woods. In the boss room of the Forbidden Woods, there are two pieces of grass outside the room. <laughs> oh my god, there are. Look right above my head. Right there. That is so fucking silly. Just two pieces of grass. Just, whoops. Seemingly, whoa, what the fuck? Ah, no. Why, why'd you do that? That was weird. Alright, we're back. Anyway. Oh, looks like Dark Link Gale uh, edit, edited most of the Wind Waker page. I guess, I guess at least one to two people are in charge of one page, depending on how big it is. I don't know. This page was last edited on February 21st of 2018. Oh, okay. Content is available under our, under Attribution 3.0, unported unless otherwise noted. Cool! Yeah, more, like, some weird out-of-bounds shit. Love it. That's some stuff you'd see from, like, She Says in Boundary Break. Hidden level features. Now this I'm curious about. <gasps> what the fuck? Hyrule Castle has some very low polygon architecture not seen during typical gameplay. Ugh. Checking the posture real quick. Oh, there we go. Um, it's possible that this is a remnant of a larger Hyrule Castle area, as this kind of low-poly model modeling is found in Dragon Roost Island and the Tower of the Gods to show the outside portions of their respective dungeons. Oh, cool. Oh, more RuneScape music, fuck yeah. But this time it's by Ashton Mills. Instead of the Ian guy, whose name I don't, whose last name I keep forgetting, Ian Taylor, I think. By the way, the geometry, the geometry is located on the sides of the castle and is hidden by both foliage and oddly placed pieces of the castle itself. Oh, this is fucking cool! Wow, Anule. See, and I want to know what the fuck language that is, because it's clearly not English, and I'm terrible at recognizing languages. Unless I've, you know, spent time studying them. French! It's the French... Uh, version of the game. That's interesting. And Anul Anula means uh, cancel. Wait, let me see if I pronounced that right. I had, that was a pure guess on my part. Anula. Hey, I was close. I keep reading. You don't actually pronounce the R's in French. <laughs> Anule. Yeah, Anule. <laughs> Nasi would be proud. <laughs> I raided her last night. She, she seems to be doing pretty well. This is so fucking cool, though. Man, I wish we could, like, walk over there, but I'm pretty sure there's, like, an invisible barrier. And we wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Dope, though. Ooh, what is this? The surrounding geometry of the top of Ganon's tower includes a small cave. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, down there. I'll zoom in in just a moment. Hmm. Includes a small cave nestled in the mountains. This isn't normally seen because the camera angles never allow for it. And the only time you have control of Link is when the tower is surrounded by waterfalls. So let's just zoom in right here. Right there. Little cave right there. God, that's so cool. I think this led to a lot of, like, 
fan speculation as well. Like, oh, they have, there was a there was a, there was a whole cut level where you'd be able to explore Hyrule. Ugh. I don't actually know if that's true. It may have been that the path to Ganon's tower was originally longer, and rather than enter directly into the tower, the cave near Hyrule Castle led to another part of Hyrule where the tower was located. Uh, comparing the geometry of Hyrule Castle... Compare the geometry of Hyrule Castle's surrounding scenery with the hidden desert scenery surrounding Ganon's tower. Uh, their commonalities make it clear that the desert model was created by altering and texturing, retexturing the model of Hyrule Castle's distant scenery. With this in mind, the desert scenery's small cave entrance seems to just be a remnant of Hyrule Castle's path to Ganon's tower, since they're located at the same spot on both models. So they just copied and pasted a bit of a model just to make it easier on themselves, which, you know, fair. The doorway in Ganon's Tower. Oh yeah, there's a little doorway like hidden just out of sight. It's just, it's just there. Hilarious. Uh, this door is, logically, where characters would exit to the top of Ganon's Tower. It's normally impossible to see due to the cutscene that immediately plays upon spawning into the map. This is also the case during the fight with Ganondorf, where the door seems to have disappeared. Possibly because the waterfall graphics cover it up. The inclusion of the door may have been so that the developers could easily distinguish the sides of the tower. Yeah, that makes sense. The top of the Forsaken Fortress Tower. There are two versions. Sorry. There, I, like to, I like to chew on plastic. <laughs> it's a little plastic nib that I'm chewing on. There are two versions of the inside of the Forsaken Fortress's tower. One seen in the cutscene before Link meets the King of Red Lions. Hell yeah, Bantha Rider. For the first time. And one where Link battles the Helmara King. The cutscene only model actually has spikes all around the rim of the tower. Which would make the flight more difficult because Link would be trying to avoid the Helmara King and stay in the center of the tower. You can only see this by using the map select. Oh, wow, that's cool. So yeah, there's the early version. At the, of the top, when you first try to rescue Ariel. Ariel? Either way. And then, there's a difference in spikes right here, and right here. So they added some extra spikies. For whatever reason. Yeah, because there's a good comparison. Well, no, my, my fucking head's in the way. There's a good comparison right there with the added spikes in the final, and then the added spikes earlier in the game, I should say. Bam, bam, bam. Good shit. <laughs> Highly recommend Bantha Reddit if you like slow, groovy jams like this. Uh, anyway. Triangle Island from atop the Tower of the Gods. After defeating Godan, Link is transported to the top of the Tower of the Gods, where he is supposed to ring a bell. Through glitches, one can go from the top of the Tower to a Triangle Island, which is normally obscured by the Tower's walls. This island, along with the three goddess statues sitting on it, are actually used for the cutscene in which the Tower of the Gods rises. Oh, cool. <laughs> Figured I'd mute that just in case. Wait, is it the same guy? No, it's not. Okay. Oh my god, they're just using glitch. They're just using straight up glitches. Cool. Oh my, I can probably do this on my fucking file. If, like, if doing this is, like, all they need to do, like, if they're not using any kind of, like, uh, if they're not using any kind of, oh, wow, whoa, oh, I love shit like this. 
This is the fucking coolest. Holy shit. Can you actually walk on that? Oh, dude, they made, they, get, they added fucking collision. Why would they add collision here? <laughs> this is so crazy. Wow. <laughs> Who thought to do this? Man. And they have, they have to like really finagle. Oh, there's a green. Yeah, they got a green potion on them. They probably end up using it all. And then you run and whoop. Yep. Wow. Wow. Who would have thought to do this, man? This is insane. Because that is quite a ways that they have to go, and they're already almost halfway through their magic meter. God damn, bro. Sheesh. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they'd have to soft reset to get back to where they were. It almost feels like they're making no progress, but apparently they are. Because I can see it slowly getting closer. And then he has to, he, and then he had, now he has to swim to the uh, to the island itself. Wow! Oh my god! And I guess doing the chop, the downward chop slash or whatever the fuck, just kind of gives him a little extra length. Yeah, he'll he'll make it. He's got plenty of air. Wow! Holy sh! And it's like fucking yeah, it's textured. The, the grass is interact. Oh, that's funny as hell, dude. Wow. That's awesome. Huh. That's, that's insane. I love that. <laughs> Next time I play, I kind of want to try that. <laughs> Just to see if I can, man. That's awesome. Wow. Are you gonna drown? Well, oh, do you have to drown yourself to get back? Oh, that's insane if so. Yeah, you have to drown. You have to drown yourself to get back. Oh, that's terrifying. What the fuck, dude? I'm kind of glad I have it muted because I hate the sound that he makes when he's about to drown. Yep, here it goes. He's slowly going under. What the fuck? Oh. Oh. Oh, that's weird. What is happening? Does he have to swim back through to get into the doorway? Oh, he does. Or does he? Oh no, the the thing, the water, the bubble disappeared. Oh, what the fuck? This is fucking weird, dude. What the fuck? This is freaky. Just slowly circle. Yeah, that's a, that's the last of the video. Oh my god, that's in that's awesome. I love that. That's fucking sweet, dude. Thirty-nine million views, I'm sure she does have that many. Wow, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. Man, that was cool. <laughs> I want to try that <laughs> next time I play Wind Waker. I'll let y'all know how it goes. <laughs> that was so cool. All right. Within the boss room of the Wind Temple, there is a collision platform that is hidden underneath the room. Oh, it's like that thing down there, that little tiny little thing. It's a, it's got collision, so it technically exists, but it's not textured, so it's like semi-invisible if you just play the game regularly. Excuse me. It is shown near the bottom picture below, yeah. It is invisible in-game and is normally unreachable. One way to reach the platform is to load this room with the map select menu and select starting point one for Link. 
Yeah, it's just a tiny little, tiny little square right down there. But yeah, it it um, it's invisible because it has no texture. That's why, as far as I'm aware, with my very limited knowledge of how making video games work. It didn't hurt, but I always try to like snip my hangnails with like little tiny scissors from like a pocket knife. But yeah, whoa, whoops. My bad. Didn't mean to go rave with it. Alright, missing flag post, how dare. Dear Mr. Krabs, dare you, how dare. <laughs> love it. Still love it. Do you, how do? I anything can't do right since because pickles. <laughs> okay. Near the entrance to Ganon's Tower, in Hyrule sits some odd collision data. There is no model to go with it, so it can never be seen. The data appears to be rep appears to represent a flag post. Oh, I guess it's just this. This pole looking thing. I thought it was a tree. Like the one seen in the bridge from Hyrule. Ooh. Da, na, na, na. Oh, it's the Dot Hack it's the Dot Hack Link soundtrack. I think it's Dot Hack Link. Let me double check. Dot Hack Sign, excuse me, not Dot Hack Link, it's Dot Hack Sign. That's the anime. And I have all of the I have all of Dot Hack Sign on DVD. It's fucking phenomenal. I need to rewatch it sometime. It is a fucking great soundtrack. And the enemy is like nothing special in terms of like effects or action. It's just some really nice character moments that spawn from a, from, from a particular situation that a character happens to be in. Which I think is super cool. Tsubasa, a wave master, which is the magicians of the world, um, mysteriously finds themselves unable to log out of the world. They cannot do anything about it. And so they're just stuck in the world, and the anime just shows how they deal with it. It's also a prequel to the original Dot Hat games. So you get to see a few characters, um, like their earlier forms. So like if you played the original Dot Hat games, you're like, oh, I recognize them. But if you haven't played it, you're like, oh, those are nice characters. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a Deltarune effect where like it's it's good on its own if you don't know what's happening. But if you do know like previous media from it, you're like, oh, I recognize that. All right, let's see. Interestingly, if you shoot an arrow or use the hook shot right in the place the flag post should be, you can hear a wood collision sound, meaning that it was intended to be added. The collision still exists in the Wind Waker HD. That's very funny. Next to the, oh, next to the entrance to gain. Oh, I see, yeah, because those are the little archways. That's weird. Jaboon's room. Bounds round. Jaboon's room has two points of interest, and the picture above demonstrates this. It is a, it is a top-down view of the collision in Jaboon's room, where the normal entrance is at the bottom. Okay, so there's the entrance, and then it's a little cave that you go into. And Jaboon's just, like, right there. You talk to him, and then you leave. <laughs> That's literally it. Um, to, the left and out, to the left and outside of the room, so right here, uh, there's a small square piece of collision. On this piece of collision, there is a spawn point for Link, represented by a small orange dot. That's hilarious. I'll zoom in on it in just a moment. Uh, and it can be seen more clearly if you click the image to enlarge. Yeah. It. The other point of interest is there is a small. There's a spawn point for the King of Red Lions as well, located on the northwest part of the larger collision area, just outside the main room, represented by a purple dot. Is there? Oh, I see it now right here. Right there. That's weird. 
Again, it is best if you click. Yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. Matcha gotcha. So, the spawn point collision for Link is right here. Little orange dot. And again, collision is just like anything that a 3D model of a character can touch. And it's usually used for them to stand on or interact with or uh, prevent them from just walking through walls. <laughs> It's sort of like the the wooded backdrop of sort of like 3D video games. And a texture that you put over the collision is um, sort of the paint that you paint over the, the wooden boards to act as scenery. That's the best I can explain it as. Again, coming from someone with very limited knowledge of how video games are made. And then there's the spawn point for the King of Red Lions. Which just means that's where that that's a load point where Link would pop in, and then where the King of Red Lions would pop in. Why is it there? Who fucking knows? Because it's not used. All right, that's it for that series of for the hidden level features, anyway. Ooh, unused Link animations. Fuck your your. <gasps> Yo, look at that swimming boy. He's angry about it, but he's swimming. I would have liked to see it in a video format, but still. Oh, by the way, the black metal band that's playing right now is called Morning Dawn. Morning is in Morning Death. Morning of a Lost One. <sighs> he angry about it. He's like, I can't swim in the final game, man. Oh, that's it. While Link's swimming animation is used, the fact that the game's water is opaque means that players can normally only see his head. The fact that he is fully animated is mostly hidden from sight. Uh, however, certain test rooms do use transparent water. Okay, yeah, so certain test rooms, not all of them. Suggesting that this was not always the case. Arguably, this is not, quote, unused, as Link's shadow is projected to, uh, upwards onto the water, which is hilarious. Interestingly, if you L-target and swim left, right, or backwards, Link will use the same animations as he would on land. That's weird. So he's just walking underwater. I don't think I've ever actually done that. Unused NPC animations. This page sucks. If you could make it suck less, that would be awesome. It seems that this page was in development at some point, but was never finished. This, this is evident by the various placeholders that exists on where info should have been. Someone with technical knowledge would be useful to clean it up. Okay. Poor Maggie. What? Oh, poor, oh the poor version of Maggie. Maggie's the blonde girl that is poor at the beginning of the game, but after she gets kidnapped she and taken to uh, the Forsaken Fortress. No, excuse me, Maggie's the redhead who's poor at first and then gets taken to the Forsaken Fortress where she finds a lot of the skull necklaces from the Moblins, and then she sells them, and then uh, her and her dad get rich. And uh, the other one, the blonde girl, is the one that starts out rich and then becomes poor. Whoa, what the fuck? You normally cannot talk to Maggie while she is poor, which is hilarious. Which is hilarious. The freeze, you normally cannot talk to Maggie while she is poor is such a... <laughs> it's such a weird thing to see out of context. Like, if you don't know what the fuck this... What the fuck this means... <laughs> it sounds super bigoted. <laughs> you can't talk to her while she's poor. Oh my god, that's hilarious. <laughs> Ooh boy. Okay. Ooh. As she only appears during cutscenes, though it is possible to talk to her in one of the character test maps, it doesn't trigger this animation. Uh, the fact the animation exists suggests that either she wasn't supposed to be kidnapped until sometime before the second Forsaken trip, Forsaken Fortress trip, or that you could talk to her during her forsake for her fortress imprisonment. Goddamn. What do we got? Oh, Aw, 
she cute? Oh, a little, yeah, a little talking animation. Cool. Oh, she's got a little baggie. I like that. That's really cute. Maggie's adorable. She gets all rich and gets like that fancy dress with the lipstick. <laughs> it's goofy, but it's also cute. Yeah? Why do you, why do you keep fucking showing her like behind? That's weird. <laughs> Is that it? Okay, I guess that's it. For some reason, I thought there'd be dialogue. I don't know why. Oh, eh, eh, eh. Here we go. Ganondorf, most definitely a test animation. Ganondorf, Ganon just T poses, slightly moves his legs and head, and opens his opens and closes his his mouth. Click to view animation. Okay. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, man. Now I've got a few different options for the fucking thumbnail. That's a good one. Just a T-posing Ganondorf. Oh, that's great. He even lurches his head forward, kind of. <laughs> oh, we love to see it. I love goofy shit like this. That's my jam. Love that. Demo 35. This is the archive file for the cutscene in which Ganondorf morphs into Puppet Ganon. While it's used, it contains some unused resources. And it's never shown. For what? Oh, yeah, that's right, because it was never finished. Princess Zeruda. Uh, the, these sleeping animations aren't used as a copy, aren't used as a copy of Zelda's model, albeit only her head, is included with the model for the bed sheet. They cannot even be used with the bed model, as it features more bo more bones than the standard Zelda model. And bones in this case being, like, the 3D model equivalent of regular bones you'd have in the human body. Where, you, where you'd have, like, one long part to represent the arm, and then um, five little smaller length ones for the fingers. And then in more detailed 3D models, you'd have, like, individual joints. It's crazy how... Advanced a lot of 3D modeling has gotten in recent years. I want to. Oh, here we go. Demo 18. This is an archive for the cutscene in which Link meets Jaboon. While used, it contains some unused resources. All right, let's see what you got then. He looks so doofy. He's got no eyes. You can't hear. I'm in the way. You can, he's got no eyes. <laughs> he ain't got no eyes. That's so funny. He ain't got no, we ain't got no eyes, Lieutenant Dan. Oh man, that's funny. Oh boy, I'm just, I'm just gonna be down here in the corner. I'm gonna be just ahead for now. A little easier to see. Oh man. Oh, okay, so you can animate that thingy on his head. With the antenna or whatever you call it. That's weird. Is that it? Oh, no. Oh, hey, we got some facial features. <laughs> Make sure you had the features part. Oh, he's yellow. He's a piss boy now with his, with his tongue sticking out. Oh, my God. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Right there! Right fucking there! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's good. That's so funny. He just. <laughs> He's just fucking. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. He looks like a fucking spaceship. Oh my god, dude. Fucking gorgeous. Gorgeous. Holy shit, that's another contender right there. That might be the winner. 
Oh my god, dude. Oh, gee, fucking hilarious. Oh my god. Whoo! Holy shit. <laughs> oh yeah, I wasn't done with it. Duh. Got, 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 got about 30 seconds ish left. Give or take. <laughs> He's just like, boo, boo, boo. There I go. <laughs> there he goes. Oh my god. Again, why is he piss colored? <laughs> why is he piss colored? Holy shit, dude. What a thing to see. Doesn't work right yet? Yeah, you can say that again. Is he just stuck there? Yeah, he just stick. He's, he just sits there for the rest of the video. Oh my god, that was funny. We are seeing so many crazy things. Ooh, beautiful chandelier. Archive file for an unused chandelier that appeared in the Space World 2001 trailer. Okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. There it is. Uh, the first animation doesn't seem to animate the model much, besides separate the chandelier from the rope. The second animation also separates the chandelier from the rope, but it is also a real animation. It makes the chandelier and rope swing together. Both animations can be seen in the video. Yeah. Swingity dongity. Yeah, it's kind of an animation. Very janky. He's <laughs> just like me. Let me get you. I feel, like, yeah, I feel like if you added a pair of eyes to that, I could be like construed as like a sea creature. <laughs> oh my god. He's adding the, the extra animation, okay. Oh, Jesus. What the fuck? Yeah, I see it, dude. Yeah, why? Are you gonna play the animation? Looks like it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's a little better. Like, barely. Huh. Okay, good. I'm glad he zooms in on it. Day five of Wind Waker. I mean, I can't blame it. Can't blame him. It took me quite a few streams to beat it as well. Okay, that's... Excuse me, that's it for the unused NPC animations. Oh, unused cutscenes. We got so much more to look through. Fuck yeah, dude. Build date. Let me double check and make sure. Oh, different things in different places. Hyrule alterations... Okay. So the main page doesn't have too much on it, but... There's quite a bit in the, um, the sub-pages. We'll pro we probably only have enough time to look through the unused cutscenes, and then we'll have to call it. Because it's, uh, we're, we're an hour and 45 in, and I usually like to keep these streams short. Tetra in the forest, yeah. E3 Roops stage.arc is an earlier version of the cutscene in which Link meets Tetra. I would love to see a video of it, but there's nothing here. Never mind. We have time for more. Unused rooms. I think this is where... Oh my god. Page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4. Jesus. Sub-sub pages? Crazy. Anami? What the fuck? Whoa. Let me 
Icing Island model, island model added to map. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Island model added to map. It's like a sandy little basic place. Almost looks like a test map. Oops, sorry. I don't know if y'all heard me bump the laptop or not. This archive is called A underscore Nami, which translates to A underscore Wave. I keep bumping my laptop. I'm sorry. Uh, it contains an invisible island. The reason the island is invisible is because its model is missing from the file. The map file shares several similarities with another unused map called VR Test. What? I don't think it's the VR like we mean. Uh, for one thing, the two use the same collision mesh. Second, they have very similar actor setups. Although A underscore Nami contains two extra bagoblins, a moblin, and some large trees. Ooh, yeah, that, that, that's the collision. And the actors, which are those little dots, which is where the uh, enemies would spawn in whenever the full thing loads. And you have to set up, like, a time or a trigger to trigger the actors to start loading in whenever a specific trigger happens or like you know a little thing is activated usually it's an invisible like wall that the character walks through which automatically loads the game and whatnot itchy like in a good a good example is um whenever you're going into a cave in wind waker you will or a uh, better example uh, the Tower of the Gods. It's a big old archway with darkness in front. That's actually just a black texture to make it look like it's dark inside. Um, in the exact same spot, maybe right in front of it, uh, of that black texture, is a... I don't know what, the, I don't know what it's called. I don't, I don't know the term for it. But it's an invisible little wall thing that as soon as Link walks through it, uh, it acts like a little switch that immediately fades to black, deloads the immediate ocean and sea around him, and then loads in the inside of uh, the Tower of the Gods. That's like the layman's explanation of it anyway. I wish I could memorize the, uh, the actual terminology. I know Matt used to be in video game development, so he might know, but still. <sighs> still cool, though. Trailer areas. Hyrule Castle's interior early. Ooh! You can barely tell what anything is because of all the, like, the single color and white lines. <laughs> still neat, though. This archive is called R A underscore RU, or R double uh, zero, which stands for a, a room double zero, or a room moo if you're silly. It contains a file that uses the .bmd extension, which suggests that it is a run-of-the-mill binary model file for the GameCube. However, it is actually in a strange plain text format. When converted to, B to .bmd, it is revealed to be the collision mesh for an earlier version of Hyrule Castle, and this and collision mesh is just like the basic bones of an environment. You have it's basically an unpainted sculpture, essentially, where you have the basic wireframe, and then the the colors around it are, is the basic shape and outline. Um, and but it actually, you know starts to look like an actual inside of a building when you add the textures, which is essentially the paint and glaze and whatnot. So this is, well, this is a sense so this is essentially like a sculpt, a sculpture with one layer of like, there's like a, there's like a specific type of like pre, pre firing glaze that you put on pottery sometimes, I think it's been forever since I've worked with pottery. So I don't, I don't quite remember, but I seem to remember uh, you uh, like having to like make the sculpture that I want to make and then paint or brush some kind of liquid over it that helps it fire better could be wrong though but still it's kind of like that um let's see 
However, it is actually a strange... No, I already read that one. According to the file's header, it was generated on July 19th of 2002, six months prior to the Wind Waker's Japanese release. Forest of Fairies. What the fuck is this? A regular DZB collision mesh. One of the matches a forest area shown in the very early trailer for the Wind Waker, in which Link is shown battling a pair of moblins. And admiring a group of glowing party. Oh, this is from the fucking trailer. It's from the Ethi trailer. Okay. No wonder I didn't fucking recognize this. I was like, what the fuck is this? Okay. That's pretty neat. to write down like the highlights of what we've seen so that whenever I go to raid somebody I'm like yo check out this weird ass shit that we saw <laughs> uh, this one matches a forest area already read that excuse me forest area. the load to load this area via the game's map select called rm double zero test the Hyrule castle dot bmd must either be replaced with a regular model format or deleted entirely however it is rather unstable and frequently causes crashes. So yeah, this was never meant to be loaded into the actual game. Oh, there's that scene from the uh, from the screenshot that we saw earlier that featured like Link facing toward the left, and then a Moblin over on the right that that was crying and acting like Link like fucking poked it in the ass with a sword. Because <laughs> there's the toadstool, and I made a comment that uh, I liked the hollowed out log look. Which it would later come back in like Breath of the Wild, in the Lost Woods. Uh, despite dating from early in Wind Waker's development, the layout for the area resembles the final game's forest of fairies. Uh, the forest found atop Outset Island. Oh, okay, is where the Helmarok King drops Tetra at the beginning of the game. It also contains a fairy fountain. Yeah, now I remember. Okay, got it. DZB file loaded in SketchUp, D DZB file loaded in Game. Oh, YouTube video is sweet. Here, I'll close that one and then let this one load. What the fuck? Here, we'll just full screen that. That way the entire fucking website doesn't have to load. I don't know why they didn't just embed these, though. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Come on, you. Load. Oh my god, it's just the widest of voids. Apologies for those sensitive to brightness. High brightness. Danger. High brightness. What the f Oh. Cool. Yeah, see, now you see. Here's a, here's a, good, a good example of, like, what these, um, mesh. Um. mesh collision collision meshes look like like in the 3d environment like you're taking a tiny camera and looking through like a detailed sculpture which is so fucking cool to me i love shit like this because you can't quite you, like you can kind of tell what some things are like there's the fucking hollowed out log with the with the toadstools in it don't stew softener. Oh yes, I'm sure a nice BM is the perfect solution to marital problems. I need to watch Shrek 2 again. That used to be my favorite one of the two. I never watched any of the other ones though. This is so cool. Okay, yeah, I think after we watch these two videos, we will have to pack it up for the evening. And we will return at a later point to see what we had missed. We still gotta go back through Ocarina of Time. There's, there's, still sh there's still shit in that fucking page that we haven't looked at yet. There's a lot for Ocarina of Time. They, like, they found a shit ton. Oh, it's Omori. 
I'm gonna play that on stream one of these days. Yet again, it's a uh, it's a matter of if if I want to do like one day for shorter games that I can get through quicker, and then one day for longer games. I'll have, I'll I'll uh, I'll see about doing that because there are so many games that I want to fucking play <laughs> that I don't know if I'd ever have time for. Yeah. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. More toadstools, and I think that's like the that's like a broken tree. Hey, Limpenio della Ombre, Italian occult horror doom metal band. Cool. Yeah, there's the full map right there, just zoomed out. Okay, we're gonna close that up. Very Black Sabbath. Oh, I think it's a cover of, uh, of, uh, I think it's a cover of a Black Sabbath song. I thought Snowblind looked familiar. Okay, so they, so they're, they're showing this, showing how it looks in game. Come on. Dude, just fucking full screen. go Jesus that was more of a hassle than it should have been okay whoa <laughs> that already looks weird stop running in circles and just like show us show us the goods is it, oh I guess, I guess it's invisible because they're not textured Oh, that's weird. Yeah, they're not textured. Oh, weird. Cool, though, but fucking weird, bro. Yeah, okay, so it's just not textured, so it looks invisible. That's what, that's what I said. That's what mesh collision, or collision mesh looks like when it's not textured. So, <laughs> think of, like, an invisible, <laughs> an invisible, uh, an invisible clay sculpture that you could only see with like 3D glasses or some shit. <laughs> Close, thank you. Let's see, how much further down is this? Oh my god, we are like at the very top. Fuck yeah, man. So we go, we're gonna look at one more. This archive is called Ab Ship. It contains all the submarine maps. Oh, okay, including room 3.arc, which is never loaded in game. Which I guess just is just this one. It's just a, an empty boat with a single torch. Uh, the room itself is indistinguishable from the other submarine maps. A lone torch is positioned at its centre. They are not American. <laughs> the small chamber that would once have held its treasure chest is empty. A ladder that is that was intended to grant access to the chamber once Link has solved the submarine's puzzle, quote unquote puzzle remains embedded within the ceiling. However, since the room lacks a solvable puzzle, the ladder cannot be activated, rendering the treasure chamber unreachable without cheating. I mean, you, you kind of have to cheat to get in there anyway. Attempting to leave the room via the doorway crashes the game. This is likely because the room doesn't appear to have any defined exits. Whoa! That looks like a fucking playground. I love how much like playgrounds testing rooms look. We will save this for next time, though. So the Amos underscore T terrain T 
test map. We'll go ahead and bookmark that. And then we are gonna pop on over here. That was fucking awesome! Okay, and I'm hoping that there are at least a few people still in chat. So I, so I, 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 can, I can check and see if I have enough people to raid some of the folks from uh, Keeks' server. Because they have that thing turned on where you have to have at least two or three people in your chat, I think. Which, you know, it, it keeps, it help, it keeps, uh, um, I guess, spam bots from getting in your chat. And I get, so I get that part. Let's see. Momo? Oh, I would love to raid Momo. She's too famous. <laughs> hey, Skyward Sojourn is playing Zelda, but I can't tell which one they're playing. Let's see. Experiments. From Quiver Dancer? The Rise of the Dancing Spirit. Never, I don't remember that. Either way. Let's see. <laughs> Lee and Lai, or Lee and Lee. If you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside, fucking Amelie rips. Love Amelie. Make Malo. Spider She. Fire Mountain. Gargo Guile. All right, yeah, fuck it. We're, we were looking at cut um, Zelda content, so let's go raid Skyward Sojourner. Motherfucker. I knew better. I knew better. That's an ad break. Well, I can say so long to the VOD watchers. Thank you for watching this far. And I hope you enjoy any other VODs that you choose to uh, take a gander at. Have a wonderful day.